the affective affective we have uh, looked at uh, earlier also for that particular month for that particular year what is that affective right so we'll use these two words nominal and affective both in terms of interest rates as well as discount rates and because some financial instruments are quoted in the form of nominal some of them are quoted with respect to affective or in some cases uh, we may we may see that they are uh, using the interest rates and in some cases they are using the discount rates so we should be comfortable in converting uh, the rates from one form to the other so we have to see whether the interest rate is a nominal rate or a effective rate or coming given a nominal rate how do i convert it into an effective rate all these kinds of conversions we need to be comfortable with and along with that we also will introduce what is called as a continuously compounded interest rate so which is typically called as force of interest we'll come back uh, to that again that's a continuously compounded uh, interest rate we'll uh, look at uh, even that aspect so uh, packaging all these things is what we are going to cover as a part of this particular session so if at all i have to identify the difference between an effective rate and a nominal rate first thing i would like to bring out if at all the number of periods is equal to 1 effective rate is always equal to nominal rate i am not saying number of years equal to 1 number of periods equal to 1 i am making a statement that effective rate is equal to nominal rate what do i mean by that if at all i am talking about a monthly interest rate monthly effective rate m and monthly nominal rate is also m if i am talking about uh, only one month period the monthly nominal rate will be the same as monthly effective rate also whereas if there are differences for example if I say the annual rate, annual effective rate of interest is some i, whereas annual nominal rate of interest is some IP. On a nominal terms, let's say the interest rate is IP per year and I is the annual. Typically, if I am trying to find out uh, um, uh, the annual itself, right uh, what is uh, the relationship uh, directly between an annual interest rate and uh, the annual effective and annual nominal provided the compounding happens annually if that is the case then i is always equal to ip if the compounding happens annually there is no difference between an effective annual rate and uh, a nominal annual rate but the problem comes when the compounding happens non annual because most of the quotations will be based on the nominal rate if someone says 8% per annum see this is the scenario where you will use that 8% per annum is the quoted rate but compounded quarterly or compounded monthly if that's the case what is the effective annual rate so 8% is not the effective annual rate it's a nominal annual rate which is compounded quarterly in this case i can take the quarterly rate directly as 2% if this is the kind of an example given if someone has given 8% per annum effective then it's not 2% per quarter you have to really understand the difference here 8% per annum effective need not work out to 2% per quarter but 8% per annum nominal compounded quarterly will definitely work out to 2% per quarter 
So that is what uh, is the terminology different because uh, some banks, most of the banks, the way they quote on their deposits is primarily the nominal rate along with the compounding frequency. So the simple logic always is if at all I have to find a relationship between the two, first I will take depending on what is their compounding frequency. So the effective annual rate we know it is 1 plus i. That I will equate it to. I know that the nominal interest rate is IP. Identify what is the compounding frequency. So if it is semi-annual, you take P as 2. If it is quarterly, you take P as 4. Because I can find out the quarterly interest rate is nothing but 8% divided by 4. And raise it to the power 4, which is raise it to the power P. This is the relationship between the nominal rate of interest and an effective rate of interest. You have to be very careful in the question, in the examples or in the scenarios, depending on whether we are talking about a nominal rate or an effective rate. Because there will be some difference in the actual values. And we have to be very careful because we may choose the wrong product in case we don't understand the differences at this layer. Right? So wherever the duration works out to be 1, there is no difference between the two. But if the duration is multi-period, this is the kind of relationship that works out between the two. Now, if I have to see a small example, at a nominal rate of interest, so we are talking about 1000, that's not going to come today, the 1000 is going to come after 5 years. And the interest rate in the process is 8% compounded quarterly. So there are two models to solve this. Either So the discounting factor, whatever I may have to find out, I can do it based on assuming that 8% quarterly is nothing but uh, 2, uh, sorry, 8% per annum compounded quarterly is nothing but 2% per quarter and P take it as number of quarters which is 20 quarters and find out the present value which is nothing but as per the discounting mechanism 1000 by 1 plus I 1 plus 2 percent to the power 20. Take the because 2 percent is the effective quarterly rate. If I am taking off a quarter, if I am just looking at it as a quarter, then I can very well uh, take it as uh, 2 percent per quarter and I will take it uh, as 20 percent. I mean 20 uh, quarters and do the compounding. So which will uh, work out to me as 1000 divided by 1.02 to the power 20. So some 672.97 is the present value. If I am directly doing through that mechanism. But there is another mechanism. I can convert 8% per annum compounded quarterly into an effective annual rate. How do I find out what is the effective annual rate? 1 plus i is equal to 1 plus 8 percent by 4 to the power 4 which is nothing but 1.02 to the power 4 minus 1 will become the effective annual rate. Okay, let me find out effective annual rate 1.02 to the power 4 minus 1 which is giving me 8.24 percent is the effective annual rate. Now all I can do is effective annual rate to the power 5. So 1000 divided by 1 plus effective annual rate to the power 5 will give me the present value which is nothing but 672.97. Either I do it in terms of quarters or I do it in terms of years. The only thing is I should be comfortable on the conceptual part. We need to first understand whether the interest rate that is given to us is a nominal rate or an effective rate. If at all it is given as an effective rate, nominal rate, 
how do I convert it into an effective rate? And based on that, how do I find out the discounting factor? You should not uh, get confused uh, across these words because the discounting factor always applies based on the effective rate of interest or discount. So, if nominal is given, either take it as one single period. If period is one, then the nominal and effective are one and the same or convert it into effective first and then use the effective rate to find out the discounting factor. So, these two things have to be kept in mind for solving any kind of numericals. The same logic holds true for effective rates of discount, nominal versus effective rates of discount also. If someone says, this is the discount rate, this is a nominal rate of discount or probably this is the discount rate compounded quarterly. Now look at this uh, numerical, the same logic holds true. If at all we are talking about uh, an annual rate of 